The portion of British Columbia we see from the boat is tiny indeed. But the combination of the working coast and ecotourism gives a glimpse of a future that reconciles industry and conservation. Funding for In the Americas with David Yedman was provided by Agnes Howard. About 50 miles across Puget Sound from Seattle lies Vancouver Island in Canada. We'll travel up island, as locals say, to meet our boat, a sort of eco-freighter. From the southeastern end of the island, we drive northwest to Campbell River through what once was unending rainforest. The province of British Columbia in Canada is nearly as big as the state of Alaska. Vancouver Island off the coast is bigger than many states in the United States. It's only one of several thousand smaller islands. Getting to those other islands can also be tricky. And there are places where the only way to get to the mainland is from one of those islands. Just a few feet from the highway is one of the few remaining tracts of temperate rainforest left in the southern part of Vancouver Island. The two principal trees in this forest are the red cedar, which is over 500 years old, and the Douglas fir, which will get up to seven or 800 years old. Now, these trees, particularly the red cedar, were of extraordinary value to native peoples for a hundred different products, but they're even more valuable now for commercial lumber, and thank heavens they're preserved protected here in this park. It's hard to estimate the diameter of this tree, but look, my tip to tip fingers span is 72 inches or six feet. So if we take a bunch of Yetmans, there's two, four, six. Circumference divided by pi, it's over 10 feet in diameter, and it is immensely tall. Another common tree in the rainforest here is the maple. It's, the maple leaf is a symbol of Canada. Maples are everywhere, but here in the rainforest, the leaves get very, very big, and when they drop their leaves in the fall, then you get the full glory of the evergreen trees. Then in spring, they leaf out and they bring their own color. It's a great addition. It's a drive of about 150 miles to Menzies Bay, where we hope to meet our eco-freighter. The Aurora Explorer is not your run-of-mill cruise ship. It's a big, heavy ship loaded with equipment for delivery. They tell me that when it actually gets to work, it can move right up onto dry land. So what I don't detect is it's a, the, the beauty of a cruise ship, but this thing is solid. Since there are gonna be pretty good storms here, I'm grateful for that. So they tell me that my stateroom is on the second story. This has the feel of new paint. And uh, this is the uh, entry. Well, we sail from Campbell River. Generally, our scheduled freight sailings take us anywhere from the mouth of Jervis Inlet all the way up the mainland coast to uh, the Broughton Archipelago, hundreds of islands. We've been in business since 1979, and it began as an industrial effort, service to remote sites for logging camps, fishing lodges, aquaculture, construction sites, things of that nature. There were a lot of people that were really interested in seeing the working coast. It was very difficult for folks to get out, unless they had their own boat or their own airplane, it was very difficult to get out to some of these areas and show it to them. And we knew that we'd have something successful and interesting if we were able to combine it. A lot of the passengers that sail with us are surprised to see the activity on the coast. They're surprised when we uh, are traveling through a beautiful wilderness area and there in the middle of nowhere appears a million dollar home that somebody set up and that's their summer place. Or they're even more surprised when we 
go to a very remote area and there's a logging camp that's active and has a couple of dozen men living and staying there, crew boats and airplanes coming and going. And it all supplies income for all the people that live here on the coast. When we leave for this day, we're going to come The captain is Ron Stevenson. The passengers number only 11, few enough that Ron gives us personal briefings about our itinerary. Unless you think we're on a honeymoon cruise on the Aurora Explorer, we take a look at what they're actually hauling down here. Um, there are pickup trucks. Uh, there is a large container, which someone said has furniture in it. There are large drums of fuel, and there are numerous other mysterious objects that only later will become apparent. Well, we move everything from heavy equipment to groceries. Uh, we move dangerous cargo, we move a little bit of fuel, we move a lot of heavy equipment back and forth, and we move a lot of the supplies that the forest industry and the construction industry need to survive out here. On any given sailing, we'll have heavy chains and wires for the log booms that move back and forth. We'll have excavators that are used for building roads, right down to cases of eggs for some of the coastal restaurants and the private facilities that are up to the coast. It takes a couple of big engines and a couple of big props to move this multi-thousand ton boat. We're only doing between seven and eight knots. That's pretty good speed and it'll get us where we're going. So the engine room is the, the guts of this operation. Well, we've got a couple of main engines, and we've got two generators, three different pumps, air compressors, all kinds of electrical to run the entire ship. Those engines power a Canada-built boat that's been around. It's 135 feet long, 35 feet wide, of 305 gross tons, with a three-story cabin and a big deck. If there's any one product that British Columbia and Canada is known for, it's lumber. It's not quite the industry it was 50 years ago, but there are logs everywhere. And water is a great place to uh, get them and move them. It's cheap transportation. So we see jams of logs by the millions. Getting ready to go to the sawmill, the lumber that goes to the rest of the world and even some of it here in Canada. This is actually a prefabricated bridge that they're trying to unload here using a log mover plus a forklift to get it up an impossibly steep hill. The lumber country here is very topographically rough and there are small canyons with streams in them. Some of those streams are important salmon or trout habitat, so they have to construct a bridge and the bridge has to be brought in. When they are done, they will collect the bridge and move it somewhere else. As, as Captain, what, what are you responsible for in the delivery of this equipment? Well, my responsibility is that the freight gets off safe and that my crew is safe. At the moment, I'm just uh, at the wheel holding the vessel on the beach. So typically, how long do they, will they stay in one place here with this kind of operation? Well, this particular site, they've been here for going on three years now. Awesome. That's quite a, quite a long time to be in one spot. Eh? But the market's good right now, so just keep on logging. The big companies, are st they're not doing any of the logging. They have the, the, the TFLs, the Tree Forest Licenses, but um, contractors are coming in and, and doing the logging. There'll be a, a road builder that will come in to build the road. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be a separate falling contractor who comes in to fall the trees. They have a, a hauling contractor with the logging trucks. That many different contracts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the bridge is spectacular, but the port, the port of body is just as important. Yeah, well, it's all about keeping the environment in as best shape as you can. So the delivery here is complete. They may not return here for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, or they may have to return in a few days. It all depends on the needs of the lumbering operation here. My guess is that this inlet, which is called Butte Inlet, was probably originally a fault, a crack in the Earth's surface, and the glacier followed that crack, and we've got 5,000 feet of glacier and all that weight moving down. It just carved out this valley and rounded all the sharp corners out. This morning, during one of the loadings, they got a bunch of mud on the ramp, so our pilot decided to clean that off. 
This is ramp washing BC style. So this is a, the major fuel supply. When they see the boat come in, you know they get fuel for another few days. I've never seen a hose that's over 100 yards long before. You have a feeling here that you're in a 23rd century operation on another planet. Most of the deliveries that the Aurora Explorer makes are connected with lumber, and lumber is the industry that drives the economy of this part of the coast of British Columbia. The Aurora Explorer has done an unusual thing, combined ecotourism with industrial work. So we have a, a ship that is constantly making deliveries and picking things up, and people who get to watch it and enjoy this part of the wild coast of British Columbia. Some of this machinery looks like it's out of Star Wars. It's unlike anything I've seen before. Years ago, you used to have donkey punchers, guys that learned how to operate the machines on the job. Everything was friction related or air related, and the machines were large and really, really hard to run. Now, things have got highly mechanized and highly technical in the forest industry. The complexity of the operation here is fascinating. Uh, the logs arrive, they've already been machined. They are often felled by automatic tree felling machines, and they're cut up before they arrive down the hill here. These uh, fellows with the chainsaw are just smoothing off the edges. They're finishing them so that they can load as many as possible in these log grapplers and they will then be bound in cables and released and roll down into the ocean. They're already sorted by size. They will be put into huge gangs and tow it to Vancouver, which is about a two-day tugboat ride away from here. A log isn't just a log. These are balsam, which is a very high-valued lumber, and these will go to Japan. This log is worth here about $900. By the time it gets to Japan and is lumbered, it's probably worth 10 times that much. The captain says this is a grocery delivery. This is a floating hotel, warehouse, store, and they get their provisions from the Aurora Explorer. So each two weeks, they bring in a massive amount of groceries including ice cream, fresh meat, and fresh vegetables. If there's enough windows in there that tells me there's a lot of lumbermen staying in this place. Oh, it could be 50 people. Really? Yeah. So they come here to eat and sleep, and then they're back out to work. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah they'll, they'll, be on, they'll be on shift, huh? and uh, they, they'll, their shift could be uh, seven days on, uh, seven days off, or it could be 10 days on, four days off, whatever the company decides. And the contractors provide food and lodging? Yeah, it's all contractors. So, yeah. so you, you, you'll have maybe four contractors here. We can see some of my shipmates up here. They find this as interesting as I do. Uh, they have not, most of them, been to this part of Canada before, although they're all Canadians. So it's as new experience for them as it is for me. This is industrial, that's touristic up there. The question of the industrial work that we service and the sort of eco-friendly tourism that we apply to it as well, both sides are learning to live with the other. Managing the forest is better than leaving it stagnant in many cases. There are huge tracts of land in coastal British Columbia that are now designated to stay the way they are in their pristine fashion. And there are other areas where we've harvested the timber for so long that it's a more suitable choice to continue harvesting it. Uh, there are still conflict, it exists, but for the most part, the forest industry has a desire to overcome the conflict and to bring people back to the light side instead of the dark side. This is an industrial operation. Now we got cable down here, we got cables, we got pallets, yeah. forklifts, we got a ramp, we got a boom, yeah, a yeah. crane, There's all that stuff. On. It's, yeah, going on. It's, yeah, it's a great combination. Run of the mill of cruise ships don't carry trucks that have detonators in them and have explosive charge signs on the side and huge pallets, sacks full of explosives. 
Uh, this is austenite 15 is an explosive. This is austenite WR is another kind of explosive. This could go up in smithereens, but it makes it much more fun. Now, this equipment brings back my, my lust for adventure, and I don't see any of the crew around, so this is an available forklift. It takes me back to my youth. All right, Ron, this is Dave down here on the deck, just uh, checking in to make sure uh, everything's under control. Everything is fine and dandy. The next stop is uh, Blind Channel Resort for a recreation stop. Chance to go for a walk in the forest. In the United States, we take that to mean an amphibious assault is about to take place. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know what Canadians do about that. Well, we, never, we, never... we just walk ashore. Oh, I see you walk we, ashore. We don't assault anybody. <laughs> we, we just walk That's right. ashore. You're my much more gentle people than these rough, <laughs> brutish Americans, right? So let's go. Let's go down. Every few hours, every third day, they stop and let passengers off. It's nice on these ramps to have places to keep you from sliding because it can get very wet here. But we are told we're going to be allowed to go walk through the forest, which is uh, about time. So Felipe tells me that this they call the snag. And it's here because nobody could cut it down 100 years ago. Well, you can see all the cedar rots in, in the, the center, center. Uh -huh. and uh, that compromises the, the value of the lumber then yeah yeah but but very often the top part could still be my goodness solid wood even right now you could probably have very very uh valuable cedar at top and, and you say that i can go inside you can I'll, walk right in I i'll think, follow you i don't think i don't think there are any bears now you tell me there's a a live tree that's even bigger than this yeah it's not far from here it's uh it's much bigger and probably about 800 years old. I'm having a hard time gauging how tall that tree is because I can barely see the top. But I talked with Philippe and he says that probably 80 meters is a good figure. That's roughly 250 feet. That's a lot of tree. Yeah, we need everybody back by uh, quarter past. Um, uh, I can maybe stretch it out till 12.30, but uh, we're gonna wanna get going by 12.30 at the latest. OK, we're right on our way. We'll be there in, uh, in about 15 minutes. OK, thanks. And now I'm being summoned back to the boat by the pilot, who is also my guide. When Philippe says get back to the boat, I get back to the boat. The freight that dictates where we're going to go, and then the tides dictate when we're going to go there. Throughout the week, orders will come into the office. Um, occasionally, when we're out at sea, they'll, they'll call us up, and there'll be new freight that comes up. You know, a piece of equipment will need to be moved. The people on the boat refer to this area as billionaire's paradise. Uh, apparently, a lot of